we have a, a lot of work to do today, and everything we've done has really been leading up to the point where we want to begin to formulate some of the ideas that you generated the last three meetings, or last two meetings. I mean, even since the kickoff meeting, you come in with some great ideas, you sort them, you, you resort them, and now we want to begin to formulate them into some prioritized ideas and look at the recommendations that actually flow out to the city to some of those ideas. So that's our work for today. Um, Intrusion includes most information we today, almost all of it. We're uh, going to begin with some report back on some of the tasks that people had taken on between the last uh, task force meeting and this meeting. We want to discuss some of the suggested filters that the planning committee um, came up with for prioritizing the ideas, for beginning to sift through all the ideas to focus on a few key ones. So we want to look at those filters. And then you're going to have time to work in uh, small groups around some of those prioritized issues like housing, wealth generation, to begin to apply those filters, formulating some of your priority ideas. We'll share those through a gallery of sort of priority, and we'll uh, begin to ask for our next steps, which will begin to be moving on to um, our recommendations. So that's the flow for the day. Uh, we have suggestions. I hope they're inspirational. We might be a little more or a little less in certain areas, but we will get through the agenda about a quarter this time. I want to just recognize again the community mediation, mediation services who are here today, who are going to be providing our facilitated support, as well as have done a tremendous amount of process support for the planning committee as well as for today's meeting. I also want to again recognize uh, the planning committee. If you were at the planning committee this week, can you raise your hand? So we have, this is just a small fraction. We have about uh, seven other people who were there. A round of applause for these folks who made a great time so that we could be as soon as possible and really suggested some of the formats each time our meeting. So thank you so much. And those of you who took on some extra tasks. Um, I'm Laurel Singer, Peter Farkema. I work with Oregon Consent to review that. We're an independent a facilitation program is supported through the state, we're at Portland State. We're here to just help you with uh, accomplish goals. Um, let's start with some of the action items. Uh, that's our, any questions about the agenda? Is everybody having a package? Okay. So, um, we had some report backs. And I'm going to turn it over, I think it was Mike Solomon and Mike Wist about properties. I think you were going to do some searching into properties and Or, or 
and that this task force is developed recommendations to Eugene City Council for addressing the needs and impacts for the unhoused in the community. At that point, the unhoused in the community has made a proposal to show you what would be best for them at this point in time, as well as complying with needs for the city. We have worked very long and hard on this proposal, and it kind of cuts out the middleman as far as dealing with a lot of these issues. We have a site that we actually have aerial footage of. Um, it shows kitchen storage, work areas. It basically handles all of the issues that we have here. Um, another similar process that I can work with the functions that are delivered that are important and that have not gone over yet, as well as tie into an actual solution, which is right here in this handout. If all of you could please possibly look at that. Yeah.
Are there any questions related to that right now? I had uh, brought up that I know that at Second and Polk, there is a storage, uh, there are storage units that are now being used by, I think, a fair number of folks who go to the mission. And so, and there are within that some very small locker type things that people are currently using. So I don't know whether you have had a chance to look at that and see what uh, they're doing and see what the possibilities are. But I want to be, I mentioned it a couple times, I want to be sure it got on the, on the list. So, business. Okay. It's like a private? Yeah, it's okay. private. Um, well, the idea was that it was just close to transit and we didn't, we didn't make sure. Not essentially. Not essentially, no. no. Okay. We're just looking for insights. There's the idea that it could be spread equally throughout the city. That sounds good. Are there any further questions regarding monitors? Okay, thank you very much. We also had some folks who were going to look into AmeriCorps. Do we uh, have anything to report about a metaphor and some of the parameters? Anybody have anything on that at this point? No. Okay. So there were other kinds of things. I think um, just an update on the business plan development. Do you want to just say a little bit about that? Yeah, I think Terry McDonald should be doing piece on here. Right? So I'll try to channel Terry McDonald a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was never sure how to do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Terry had a great idea uh, that came up a couple of meetings ago, and the notion was there's a lot of folks uh, throughout town who are collecting uh, bottles and cans, and it's a good way to uh, put together a little bit of money at a time. What if there was an organized way of doing that uh, that uh, was more efficient in collecting the cans and invited the community actually to participate in that? and uh, what kind of business would that be? So uh, last time we talked about uh, putting together a little bit of a business plan, and to say that this page and a half was a business plan is kind of saying a lot about a page and a half. But uh, one thing that it does, uh, he uh, sets out uh, a notion about how much money, oh, sorry, how much uh, uh, money would need to be uh, uh, generated on a monthly basis to cover what kind of expenses to keep a thing like that together. The notion is form this as a, a experimental business, turn it into a cooperative, and the people who work there own the business and uh, uh, enjoy the labor associated with that and enjoy the proceeds from that labor. How would you finance such a thing? Uh, the city has a, a business development fund that can be used to finance a small enterprise, and we do that all over town. This would be a very appropriate use of a, of a small amount of money to see uh, this sort of business. And uh, uh, it looks like, uh, based on Terry's numbers, that you could generate about $4,300, $4,400 a month in net profit uh, on a relatively nominal uh, collection of cans uh, through the course of a month. Uh, this is a pretty exciting prospect. Uh, and I think we should consider Anybody who's here who would like to be involved in that should uh, uh, consider getting involved in, and we should flesh it out a little bit more. Uh, it needs a home, uh, like everything needs a home, everybody needs a home. And uh, that could be, this is an industrial use, it could be in an industrial area, uh, it could be anywhere in town, really. And it could be done on a lease basis. So, I'm not sure how this fits into the rest of the program, but it seems like Folks here who are interested in participating in that, uh, we should spend some time talking about what the next steps are. But it's a pretty exciting prospect, and it could generate some uh, uh, good income for uh, people who are members of the cooperative. So one of the things we'll be doing in just a minute is breaking down into some of these groups, and one of them is the wealth generating category. So that may be something you'll want to begin to flesh out in that category. But you can also be thinking, if you have an idea that's about implementing a project, those are also good Oregon solution type projects, where they'll come in and help you pull in 
the stakeholders in order to get something started. And so you could, the city, just for an example, the city's role could be to invite or request of the governor that be designated as an Oregon Solutions Project. So the governor then de designates resources. So I'm just using that as an example. There may be other facilities that you also would think might be a better Oregon Solutions Project, but that's, people had raised that question, what does Oregon Solutions do? It's, it's more of a project implementation. So we'll be able to do, spend a little time here fleshing that out. Uh, just in terms of any other updates, um, I know that uh, we talked to the mayor, the connection with the university is underway. Um, some of the other kinds of uh, follow-up is very related to um, uh, sustainability, education, health, laws and enforcement, and we'll have some, again, time to work in a small group to get, capture those feedbacks, but they were, we wanted to just give updates that had broad overviews that might have implications across, um, uh, across the different categories. Any other updates that you want to share with a large group beyond just the, the, the specific issue focus? Okay. Is this a time for subcommittees to give their report? No, no, we'll, yeah, we'll be working in subcommittees. Um, we want to talk a little bit, we're going to move now to filters. If you'll turn in your agendas, does Peter, you want to go over this? In your meeting packets, you have a document that's titled uh, Potential Recommendation Topics by Prioritized Theme. It's a two-pager, and the second page, if you flip to the second page, there's a, a section that says Draft Suggested Filters. Does everybody see that? Draft Suggested Filters? Page 202 on potential recommendation topics by prioritizing. In the planning committee meeting last week, uh, the, the planning committee talked about some filters that could be used as the group starts to think about how we're going to start to move from a whole bunch of ideas to some that are going to move forward as recommendations and others that are going to move forward in a different fashion and, and how we start to think about which ideas this group wants to move forward as priority areas and how do we start to think about which, which topics, which ideas are kind of this group's priorities. And, and the planning committee came up with a number of filters and those are what you see listed here to help the group start to think about how we might prioritize these ideas. So, so I'm going to go through them briefly, and, and as I go through them, think about how you might apply them within your subcommittee to the ideas and recommendations that are listed above. So the first one that the planning committee came up with was urgency. Is this idea or topic, does it, is it really urgent, or does this something that, take, that may, maybe doesn't need to happen right away? Uh, the implications for the city's role. Does this involve a major change on the part of the city, or is it something that's, that's not such a big change? Um, and that's specifically re related to any recommendations or policy changes you might want the city to think about. Uh, the level of impact, the greatest good. Is this, is this going to make a big difference or a small difference? Is it going to impact a lot of people or just a few people? So the greatest good level of impact. Cost benefit. Is it going to cost a lot and not impact that much? So thinking about it that way. Aligning resources. Are there ways to, to think about leveraging resources that, that create a lot of impact uh, and aligning resources around a particular topic that might make a big difference? Uh, is it responsive to the condition? And this, this really arose out of the idea that Ideas that this group and recommendations that this group brings forward, we want to build public support for and, and create friend generating was the, the topic or, or the way that that was uh, Chris Pry brought up. He said, this is, this, we got to think not just about fundraising, but friend generating, <laughs> friend raising. Um, and responsive to condition that does this really help address homelessness in our community? And, and are, people, or are people going to perceive this as enabling bad behavior? 
And, and that will be an important message in both messaging and creating recommendations that are going to have a strong impact. Uh, and the last one was this friend raising. Is this going to help build support for a, addressing homelessness in Eugene Springfield area? So these are some of the filters that the planning committee came up with. Um, and, and they wanted to be sure to, to emphasize that this isn't a way of saying which issues or which recommendations move forward and don't, but a way of thinking about which ones might rise to the surface as, as priority recommendations. So uh, anybody from the planning committee have anything they want to add to that? Yeah, they rose their, their hands earlier. If you were on the planning committee, can you raise your hand again? And, and there, there is a list, and there's a number of uh, others who aren't here today who are also part of the planning committee. Can you raise your Really, from the planning committee, wanted to have 
ideas that made a big impact on the condition of homelessness in the community. And, and it also linked to the idea of public outreach and building support for both the ideas that are brought forward as well as addressing homelessness in Eugene. So that was what that was trying to get at. Um, getting right on to what you were just talking about, the um, responsive to condition as opposed to enabling bad behavior. Um, uh, planning department, Neil Bjorkland, uh, helped us with the Whitaker about Schilbert Park that he wanted to know that any changes or investments solved a problem. Um, and even though they were good ideas of all different sorts, it filtered it down real quick that there was a problem. So the wording going to that helps to make it practical. I didn't have a question so much as a suggestion on the uh, filter of the implications for the city role in addition to, you know, is it a big switch or a minor change? Is it something the city has control over? You know, is it in the purview of the city to uh, be involved in or take action on? So that's another thing. We've heard about some state laws that limit some of the suggestions we had and, you know, getting those laws changed would be a big hurdle. So that I would suggest another way to look at that filter. And, and I'll just jump in here briefly that as we move into subgroup time, we're going to ask you to think about the recommendations in terms of whether they would require a policy change, uh, whether they would need a, a ask of support from the council, or if it's simply information sharing. You want the council and the city to be aware of this. Do you need support from the council, or do you need an actual policy change? That's Sort of getting back to this chair. I think the filter of friend raising is too timid. We really need advocacy. We need people to try and find uh, help outside our community as well as inside our community. We need mm -hmm. state and federal help. If we're in a crisis, it's not just normal what's going on. Uh, so I'll apologize you know, right off the bat for not making the second meeting. I got the uh, notice the night before a bicycle was early, it was raining. I didn't make the meeting with the task forces and the work groups that we needed. But since we're talking about filters and what's being filtered out, and what I've seen from all the minutes so far is that what precipitated this task force was Envision UG, which I was not a part of either. Uh, but, and the need or the desire for a space and to look at what was developing there in the sense of community and self-help and of building up the theme type of situation. And, and for that to happen, some space has to be identified. I don't see any work having been done on that at all. Wow. That, yes, okay, one. Just one, two, two. <laughs> and I think it, it, it's an important note that as we move into subgroups and this list of recommendations you see, probably the first item of, of business for those subgroups is going to be to find out whether we have the complete list here. Are there things that are missing? But I think one of the things embedded in what you said is this idea of, as, a, as another filter, as you formulate these ideas, is this idea of, and it's come up a lot, self-empowerment. How much does this self-empower? And you're, you're talking about sort of these spaces that allow for a lot of self-governance. But it's that whole idea, as you look through your list, what are going to be self-empowering ideas as well? Maybe another filter to help and formulate it. So I don't want to lose that point as, as another filter that you're suggesting. Beyond just a specific idea for a space. So. I just want to, pardon me, address the word urgency. It's now been 63 days since the encampment was closed. Fifty of them has been raining, although we've had a mild winter. It's an impressive rain, at least half of those days. So I'd like to have it in the forefront. That's what our plan meeting. The emphasis was about the urgency of what's taking place. I worked at a 
as a result of the We talked about in planning because it's not a cost. As, yeah. The, the question I think is whether it's a, a, a filter or, or a recommendation that might come prioritize forward. Recommendation. A prioritized recommendation. Well, the filter would be self empowerment. Right. That's exactly. what you just said. Yes. Yeah, so self empowerment is. Right. So yeah. folks would, would be willing to write down self self empowerment as an additional filter and consider that as we move forward into small group conversations around this. And then the issue of property and, and a location will come up as a as a recommendation and a prioritized topic. And any other thoughts, suggestions, ideas, or questions related to the filters? Thanks. And a special thanks to the planning committee for your work on this. So what we'd like to do at this point, and I think what everybody is, is excited to do, is to really drill down and start looking at your prioritized recommendations and ideas. And to do that, we're going to start with organizing you via the prioritized topic area. So you're going to have to select an area to start. It may be that one group gets its work done fairly quickly. Like the sustainability group may have a, a clear idea within a matter of minutes, you're ready to go, and you can join another group. But it's a place where you most want to start. Um, we're going to ask you to gravitate there. And there'll be facilitators for each of those small groups. So let's first start with the day use. Who's our facilitator for day use? So Mark, there are, what table do you want to identify in your day use? <coughs> so this, um, this is, uh, you can see some of the ideas that are already under day use. Now, there will be some, there may be some overlap, so you can link to other groups to say, boy, if there's a site, for example, there's a space that's going to be doing this, this would be a great place to have our storage. So don't think that you can't overlap with other categories. So the next one is housing and shelter. So this would be Tim. Tim, you can just sort of identify a table where you're going to start to gather your folks. So Tim, if you're if you're going to be in housing and shelter, wealth generating. And this would be um, Chip. This was the idea about some of the co-op ideas, microfinancing, some of the street vendor ordinances, those are the wealth generation. Community engagement and education. That would be Elizabeth, where are you? Where are you going to congregate? Policy and ordinances. That is Deb. You can you want to find it. Right, right here in the center, okay? Policy more important. How about health? Where's our health? And that is Robin. And then sustainability. That would be Beatrice. <coughs> sustainability. <coughs> How about over here? I, I'm hoping Andrew's going to be on that. Sustainability, that's the infrastructure advisory.
we can uh, encourage people to come on up because we're going to be looking at these ideas and playing with them a little bit. Folks, if you're at a table, we need you to stand on up and come on down. If you're sitting down, you should be standing and moving toward the front of the room. If, if you can come on down, we want to begin to think about these. Let, let's start down at the day use area. Here, here's what we want to do. We want to see what came up as some of the prioritized ideas in each category. So, some of the colors are switched, don't worry, well, it'll all come out. What we want to know are your top ideas and the implications for policies in each group. And be thinking, as you hear these, are there overlaps? Are there ways that we can combine some of these ideas and, and kind of shout those out? Because what we'll also have you do when we're all done is you can wander around, you each got three dots. And we just want to get a sense from this group as to what you think are the ones that rise to the top in terms of the filters that you talked about. They're, they're, they are address urgency needs, they really seem to solve an immediate problem, they have an impact, uh, they, uh, they really uh, foster self-empowerment. So let's think about the day use. Is there somebody from the day use committee that can talk to us about the, these ideas? Okay. So, a few of the things that we identified that were really important were storage facilities and bathrooms. We realized that there's probably many, many, many places around the city where people would be willing to provide bathrooms or storage areas. And um, so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to send out um, an email to find out if there are bathrooms, lockers, um, storage areas, places, maybe places where it could be helpful. Human Services Commission. So that's one of the things that's going to be done to find the bathrooms and the storage facilities, which we felt like were really, really important. Um, <clears throat> as well as you know, getting those mapped out so that we know where all of those things are in the city and so that we can give those to um, the people who need access to those. Uh, the other thing that we felt like was really, really important is just an inside place to sit. A warehouse, um, some kind of empty building where people can go during the day and that's going to be safe, where um, they can get out and be sheltered. So we feel like that's a really um, urgent need and something that can probably be handled fairly quickly. And it wouldn't be necessarily anything where we'd be providing services like food and things like that, but it would be an indoor place where people could go and congregate and just sit down and, and exist, basically. Just, yeah, very, very bare bones um, type of facility. And I think that's it. Okay. Well, we were, were thinking that just finding where the storage, potential storage areas or potential restroom areas are, um, I mean, the, it's kind of the same thing. There's going to be an email that's going to be sent out to kind of map those services and to find out where they are so that those all kind of go together. Um, and then the inside place to sit, I guess, would be its own separate thing. Like, it's, like we said, it's just a bare bones idea, not necessarily um, a service hub where many things would be offered. It would just be a place for people to be and be out of the elements. So these are kind of connected then, this mapping. Is yes. That, is something that's going to happen. Yes. Step in in some way and remove that barrier. Yeah. 
barrier. So until we know, for example, I, I can't think of what that would be, but let's say it's a social service provider that has two bathrooms, right? I mean, two bathrooms is better than one porta potty. So um, the, the notion here is that if there's a reason why that service provider doesn't feel unsafe about coming in on a regular basis and using that restroom, what do we need to do to make that safer so we can make better use of what we've got? And then how do we let everybody know that those things are out there in every part of town so that if you travel no matter where you are, you know there's a place you can go to go to the bathroom. And the notion here is that everybody knows. <laughs> them for storage. Um, we still haven't gotten like a clear answer on that, so that's one of the things that could be done um, is to just find out so that people can have um, a place to store their things during the day. How about the housing and shelter group? Nice work. Nice work. Housing and shelter. Where's that? Anybody from the housing and shelter want to step up? Uh, Dan Bryant. We had a lot of discussion on, on uh, expanding places for where people can safely be and uh, morphed into two basic areas. One, uh, the mission has plans to expand by 200 beds. They need a zoning change to do that. It just seems like a no-brainer. There's no opposition we know of. It just ought to be bang done. Uh, we all support that. Um, and the other is uh, just the whole relationship between the car camps and the Egan Warming Center and what we can do to create a place um, that would either expand that or be totally separate from that, but how do they all work together? So, uh, top of the priority is acquiring a site where something like the Occupy Eugene experience can happen legally, safely, and well organized. And, and, and the big thing is self empowerment, We're creating a community that is self empowered to make their decisions, get their lives in order, and so on and so forth, where all of that can happen. Crucial to that is a wet bed facility. It also has to happen. If we don't have the wet bed facility, this is not going to work uh, because we have to have that place where uh, people who have addiction issues can also safely be. Um, and then, uh, I'm just not sure if that expanding the car camp is in addition to or, or if this is instead of, but that's why we have to have that. Uh, larger conversation of the relationship between those things. And then we had a great idea for the policy committee that uh, we want to have work on, uh, on the long-term uh, issues of, of state policies around low-income housing and what we can do to do things to lower, you know, your first and last of the expense of moving into housing, uh, inclusion uh, laws that prohibit where low-income housing can be placed and so on and so forth. Can we just can we just add that to them? Is that legal? Yeah, I think that's it's a mission. Did I miss anything, Margaret?
awareness campaign, and this would be somewhat based on the recommendations that haven't been formulated yet by the group, so we're not putting the cart in front of the horse here. But uh, maybe some conversation about considering an ongoing, creating an ongoing commission that deals with these issues because they're not going to be fixed overnight, they're not going to be static, they're going to keep changing. Um, that we should engage skilled marketing professionals, hopefully pro bono. <coughs> so if there's a campaign, it's really well thought out with skilled professionals who know how to provide the right message in the right way and you get to the right results as opposed to making some significant mistake. Um, that we engage in some community conversations, much like the racism study circles that were done, where you have ongoing dialogue with people in the community who have different viewpoints, different levels of knowledge, bring them together for conversations over a longer period of time that help um, kind of change perceptions and develop new perceptions. And engage both the community and the almost unhoused people in that conversation. Um, and perhaps the uh, city can participate in there, in that by having city councilors, elected officials participating in that, attending, uh, providing food, and, um, making sure the dominant culture is not the majority in those conversations, that we have really a diversity at the table. And um, Chris Pryor mentioned that you know three different uh, ideas. He brought that to some conference and just did too. But but you have um, authentic things should be authentic, authoritative, and accountable. So people's actions should be authentic, authoritative in a positive way, that they're knowledgeable about what they're talking about. That they when they say something, it's really comes from. It's truth, it's not just speculation. And, uh, and you're accountable, and that's how you get good conversations and you get trust built in the community. Yeah. I think that's a great idea, um, kind of like the uh, study circle. And my uh, thought about that is um, that now that we have in such a circle of representatives from the different groups, but my thought is maybe one of the ways to do that is to take the study circles out instead of asking people to come to a place that you aim for parts of the community where you think those you have the opportunity to have those study circles that would allow a different conversation to happen around homelessness in the community. Richie, I have an idea to go Sure, Susan. We as a community have been talking with Neighborhood Partnerships, which is an organizing group in Portland, and they um, have been doing advocate colleges across the state, and they're interested in coming to Lake County to do an advocates college and we were trying to link them up with another I'm thinking this may be a more focused effort and probably more valuable and uh, anyway so I think we'd have a resource to do uh, the public awareness how to tighten your message how to uh, get everybody on the same page we might have a resource that you will to work with us on that what, what's the resource um, okay in Portland the group is called neighborhood partnerships and they offer statewide what's called an advocates college and it, it's using the material that's been developed by Demos, which um, is a, a democratic, and you guys should probably know about this, Patrick Brissett comes, and um, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of messaging information that resonates with everybody's deep underlying values so they get on board. <laughs> and if I could just add to that, then I'm going to pass this on. You know, a lot of work was done a, a few legislation sessions ago to get some legislation passed. Um, some messages were tested that worked, you know, and well, the advocates in the room had certain ideas about what the messages should be, but in fact, when we tested them, different messages did much better. Messages like hardworking people should be able to afford housing and still have enough money for groceries and other basic necessities. People agreed with that, you know. Children deserve an opportunity to succeed in school and life, which is tied to having a stable home. Oh, yeah, people get that. And so, um, there are ways of putting a message out there that people know, oh, okay, I like that message, and you can build on that. And so it's important to test messages, <laughs> that's why you use professionals. And that. Okay, thank you. How about the health committee? Hi, my name is Ben Rubaker. I'm with White Group Clinic, standing in for Chapter R today. Um, so with the healthcare piece, we kind of broke it into two specific things that we were looking at. Um, expanding existing services. Um, right now, because of the current funding environment, um, there's been a lot of struggles in a white group clinic with our medical clinic and trying to continue to serve people who have no other resources in digital care. Um, so looking at expanding services means identifying funding 
um, to help expand whatever existing services are out there. Um, and that's currently something that we've been focusing on a lot at Wiper, and I know other agencies are focusing on. Um, we talked about city support for a healthcare task force, um, specifically a task force that could help with volunteer coordination and recruitment, um, disseminating information to different agencies that are already doing healthcare in the community, um, and again, helping to maybe identify potential funding sources. Um, the other thing that we talked about was developing an outreach program, um, specifically like with a healthcare component, we would, uh, there was a recommendation from Andrew Ortiz to connect with the HSC to make sure that we were at the table there. Um, we also identified that 100% Access Coalition is right now working on kind of outreach programming stuff. Um, so we would want to make sure that we, that the city somehow gets involved with making sure that all of the different players are there um, with that Access Coalition to help to coordinate between all the existing service providers right now in town, um, as well as any other agencies that provide health care out there. One of the questions was, is the existing stuff that's being done under outreach including input from the homelessness, from the homeless community? That these are the ultimate end you know, users, clients that, that, that they're looking at, but are they involved in any of these planning processes right now? And, and how can we make sure that their voice is kind of heard as, as different outreach things are developed? Um, and again, the reason that I think this is in between the two of them is with both of them, identifying funding and assistance with recruiting and training volunteers is some of the, like, the key things that we can tie both of these together if we're really going to be able to, to maximize like new programs and expansion of existing programs under the area of healthcare. If you want to bring the homeless community in, then what you need are peer counselors. Uh, they're very successful. Shelter care has almost a dozen of them. Um, that hiring people who, who have the problems to make the homeless to help uh, other people, you know, people that have, that have succeeded, people that are survivors, uh, helping those that, that are struggling. They're called peer counselors. So that should be the name of the uh, So we uh, came up with uh, three ideas, and then we have some suggestions for what the city might consider doing to promote those. Uh, first one is uh, develop a neighborhood cleanup enterprise. It's kind of similar to something that the city already does downtown, uh, working with downtown Eugene Incorporated. But the idea would be to fund a pilot project that provided uh, kind of a casual labor opportunity for people who want to get involved in that. Uh, invite neighborhood associations to be part of that and maybe work with a nonprofit uh, to manage that. And perhaps uh, bring recycling came up because uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that people find in neighborhoods uh, and consider trash isn't necessarily trash. So uh, bring would be good at sorting that out. That's an interesting idea. Probably done again as a pilot project. The uh, second idea was to create an artisan enterprise. Uh, I actually think, and if anyone disagrees with this, let me know. Uh, that what we're talking about was finding a way to help people who are already artists or artisans uh, uh, have a way to produce their materials uh, and uh, market those. And maybe that can be done in some kind of facility or incubator or a place. There needs to be a place for that to happen. And uh, this would involve uh, providing uh, seed money, um, perhaps the city could do that, and some assistance with infrastructure. And uh, infrastructure is a, uh, a big word for a place to do it. Maybe there are other things associated uh, with that facility. Also, uh, the city has ordinances that restrict street vending. And there needs to be a way to market the material that comes out of artists and, and uh, artisans. And could that be done uh, uh, in a street setting, in a uh, market setting, uh, if there were some adjustments to the uh, uh, city's street vending uh, policies? And the last one, uh, we've already talked about this bottle can uh, collection and recycling uh, cooperative. Uh, the, the notions that uh, uh, came up, 
Is this consistent with the city's contracts uh, with uh, uh, existing uh, haulers and their franchise agreements? We would need to review the idea with that in mind. And again, uh, there's probably a need for seed money and infrastructure uh, to help locate that and to help uh, incent that along the way. Uh, three really exciting ideas. They hit different parts of uh, uh, the potential working population, uh, but uh, it was a great conversation. Sustainability? Good morning. So sustainability, uh, it was actually um, not my idea, it was Pat Barr's idea. One of the best friend, uh, commission on homeless and youth was a part of it back in the day when he was um, council before. So that I just kind of tiled on that because it seemed like the perfect place to. Um, so the recommendation would come from this body to focus on, you have to commission to focus on homelessness. Um,